This is brutally honest advice that I would give my 20 year old self. For those of you who are new, my name's Matt. I'm a 25 year old professional living in New York City. And I make these videos because I think a lot about life and career, but more importantly, because I enjoy it. But without further ado, let's get right into it. Lesson one, you get what you deserve, not what you want. I don't know who needs to hear this, but the sooner you realize this, the better you will understand why things happen the way that they do in your life. You get what you deserve, not what you want. And so whenever I see someone who wants something, whether it is a relationship with someone or a job at some dream company of theirs or a higher GPA or a better relationship with their parents or friends. And they're talking about it and they're saying things like, oh, you know, I don't know why, why am I so unlucky? You know, life just sucks. I've tried so hard on this and I'm just not smart enough or I'm not attractive enough or I'm not, I'm just not that kind of person. I always think to myself, well, first of all, stop it with the victim mentality and please take some ownership of your life because as an adult, you're the only person that really has 100% influence over your life. Like your actions equals your life. And in order to get what you want out of your life, you have to become the person that really deserves to have that life or to have that thing. Like you don't get a job by half-assing the interview process and then accidentally getting an offer. You get the job by becoming the person, practicing insanely hard, recording yourself, prepping with other people, networking with professionals at the company that you're interested in. You become the person that literally deserves to get that job in order to land the offer. Similar with relationships. You work out, you develop hobbies and interests, you work on yourself, your personal development, and slowly you become more attractive and begin attracting the same type of people that you yourself would want to date. And so if you don't have what you want right now, take a hard look at yourself and please ask yourself, do I deserve the things that I want? Or am I still one or two or three steps away from that? And what do I need to do to get there? You get what you deserve, not what you want. Lesson two, don't tell other people your goals. Now this might sound a little controversial, but I personally believe that you should not tell anyone your goals outside of maybe one or max two very close friends or family members. And the reason for this is I think that there are too many people out there who decide for themselves that they have some goal in life and then they broadcast it out to a ton of people in their network and then they start actually having to do the hard work to get to that goal or achieve that result and they realize, oh shit, it's actually quite difficult and they quit. And there's actually scientific evidence backing this because you get a little bit of a dopamine hit whenever you, you know, say, post on your story that, oh, you went to the gym and you did a workout or, you know, you post on your Instagram story that, oh, I'm studying so hard for this test. And then your friends obviously are super supportive and naturally people are gonna message you back and say, oh my God, you're so great, awesome. Go, go, go you, you know, like you got this. And what happens to you? Well, you feel really good. You get a little dopamine hit and that's good and all. But the problem is that subconsciously it can reduce your motivation to actually pursue the goal and put in the hard work that's required when people are not watching. The data tell us that the positive feedback that we get from others when we announce that we're going after a goal activate certain reward systems and motivation systems within our brain that then quickly dissipate and then diminish the probability that we'll engage in the type of behaviors that actually lead us to achieve that goal. And I feel like I've seen this happen so many times with people in my life who announce to the world that they're gonna do something big and they get a lot of congratulations and admiration. And then like three months later, you check in on them again and they're like, oh shit, no, I stopped staying consistent or I stopped pursuing that goal. And they just don't know why. And the reason why is often because you already got the admiration and the praise that you were seeking. And when you sat down and finally realized that in order to be successful, you need to put in work when nobody else is watching. And that sucks. It's painful. It's hard. Nobody wants to do it, but that's why not everyone is successful. Once you realize that though, you just wanna give up. Throughout my life, I have rarely ever announced to people what I was trying to do. Sure, I might tell someone at a party that I'm interested in investment banking or in consulting, for example, but I would never ever tell someone outside of my closest friend or my brother what specific company I was interviewing at or you know, toot my horn about, oh, dude, I studied like 12 hours last night. I pulled an all-nighter. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, wow, that sounds a little cutthroat. Like, you're just gonna not 
be collaborative and tell other people like what you're doing. I'm not saying you need to be cutthroat. I'm saying that you shouldn't proactively go out of your way to announce to people in a self-congratulatory way what you're doing or what kind of goal you're pursuing. Because I think that takes away from the intrinsic motivation that you should have to achieve a certain goal. And honestly, I don't think you should tell anyone about your goal until you actually achieve it. Now, some of you might also be saying, oh, but what about accountability partners? And yes, that's why I said you can probably tell at least one or two close people, but you don't wanna be like posting on your Instagram story about how you went to the gym today or you know, you applied to 10 companies or oh, you're working so hard on studying for this exam. Like again, this is brutally honest advice that I would give my 20 year old self. I'm not gonna beat around the bush here. Stop telling people about your goals. Stop oversharing because it's actually in most cases, probably sabotaging you and your progress. Successful people move in silence. Remember that. Lesson number three, develop a bias for action. Stop it with the mental masturbation. What I mean by that is you can watch all the YouTube videos you want, read all the books you want on a certain topic and talk to all the experts in the world or all of your friends about a certain thing that you wanna do. But that will never be a worthy substitute to actually doing the thing that you say you're gonna do. If you develop a bias for action, you will increase what is known as your luck surface area. Now, what is your luck surface area? Well, this is essentially the number of opportunities that comes your way throughout life. And if we think about luck as being just a combination of the number of opportunities that come your way and the number of opportunities that you are able to capitalize on, then by increasing our the number of actions that we take and creating motion in our life, towards our goals, then we automatically increase the number of opportunities to accidentally bump into someone who might be able to help us or to accidentally learn something that could help us in the long run. And so developing a bias to action is extremely, extremely important because the human mind is so, so weak and we will always make excuses for why we shouldn't do something. Oh, I'm not ready to interview with that company yet. Let me just wait a couple more months. Oh, I'm not ready to take this test. I don't feel like I've studied all the way. Give me like a couple more weeks. Oh, I'm not ready to run that race. I need to train a little bit more. Oh, I'm not ready to ask that girl or that guy out. Give me a couple more days to think about what I wanna to say to them. You are shooting yourself in the foot every time you make an excuse for why you shouldn't do something. You will never feel 100% prepared for most things that you want in life. And it's better to fail fast and quickly than to never try at all and fail before you even started. Lesson number four, don't place 100% of your identity on any one thing in your life. For most of my viewers, that thing is probably your job or your career because I know most of you, if you're watching my channel, you're probably quite career oriented or an ambitious student or early professional. And look, all power to you. I respect the hustle, I respect the grind. I myself believe it's important to pursue the goals that we have in our lives and in our careers. But I think it's very dangerous to put 100% of our identity in any one thing, whether that is the job that we work or the relationship that we're in or the school that we went to. As a person, you're multifaceted and there are many parts to you. The problem with putting 100% of your identity in one thing, like your job, for example, is you're setting yourself up for disappointment and imposter syndrome because the moment that something goes wrong in that one area of your life, you're gonna feel like the world is over. You're gonna feel like your life is over because you have nothing else to show for it. And so highly recommend, especially for fresh new grads, I know you're super excited about your job and your career, and that's a good thing. But remember at the end of the day to stay grounded and that you as a person are more than just a number. You're more than just your job. You're more than just whatever relationship or whatever school you went to. And so work hard, achieve great things. But at the end of the day, remember, there's more to life than just your job. Lesson number five, shifting your self-image is the key to lasting change. What do I mean by that? Let me show you. All right. So your self-identity is like this rubber band and usually it's fixed in one spot. So for example, you identify, you self-identify as a certain type of person, right? And say you decide one day that you want to make a change in your life. Maybe you wanna start exercising more, for example. And what happens is you basically stretch this rubber band in this direction. Say this direction is like, I wanna be more fit. And you know, you stick to this goal for a good amount of time. Let's say, you know, a couple of weeks, but then what happens after that? You lose willpower and snap back to where you started because that's where your self-identity is. And so you're beginning to see here, right? In order to truly change ourselves, we need to not just do something using willpower, which is stretching the rubber band. We need to actually move and shift our self-identity 
So we need to become that person that automatically works out, you know, regularly. Because then when you don't work out, that's what feels abnormal to you. And working out is just what you would do. And so I honestly wish that I had realized this sooner because when I was a student, I tried so many things, so many morning routines, so many tips and productivity hacks to try and make myself be more productive, you know, be more in shape, you know, be more confident, get better grades. And all of it required a significant amount of willpower. And I experienced a lot of failures because I would always, like this rubber band, snap back to my current self because I didn't believe that I was the type of person that deserved to say, for example, get a 4.0 GPA or you know, land a job in a prestigious company. But when you realize that lasting change comes from shifting your self identity and literally identifying as, oh, I am this person and this is just what I do. It will become so clear to you why so many people are not able to change things in their lives. Now you're probably asking, well, how do I actually move the, the rubber band, right? Like how do I change my self identity if right now I feel like, you know, I'm just here, but I want to get to here. And I think the answer there is you need to change your standards. Let's take ownership here of our situation. Whatever life that you're living right now is mostly because you are okay with that. Now I know you might be like, wait, what do you mean? I'm not okay with this. Like I'm not okay with you know, living in poverty or not making any money. I'm not okay with getting poor grades at school. I'm not okay with you know, not being in shape. But honestly, if you were really not okay with that, would you do the things that you currently do which negatively impact your life and have led you to your current situation? No. And so the first step to shifting our self-identity is we gotta increase our standards and we have to set the bar higher so that we can become the person that we really wanna be and not just pretend to be that person. I hope that was helpful and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.